All right, so let's see if we can come up with a solution to this uh, infinite monkey theorem problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a function that's going to generate a string uh, that is the same length as our goal string. And remember that the goal that we have in mind is the string methinks it is like a weasel. So let's just start out by defining a function here and we'll maybe call this generate one and let's give it a length. So this uh, function generate one is going to take length as a parameter and it's going to generate a string that's len characters long. Actually len is not a very good variable name because uh, it's the same as the reserved word uh, length uh, that reserved function. So let's call it sterlen instead of len like that. Okay, now if we're going to create a string from scratch that is uh, sterlen characters long, uh, this is going to use our old friend the accumulator pattern. And so we are going to need to create a result string that will start out initialized to the empty string. So let's call this one res and we'll just initialize it to the empty string like that. So if we're going to generate uh, a string that is sterlen characters, we're going to need some kind of a loop. And so let's just start out with a for loop for i in range sterlen. So that'll ensure that we're creating a string that's of the right length. Now here comes the tricky part. Now we need to find a character uh, that is one of the 26 letters of the alphabet in lower case or a space character. So how are we going to do this? Well, if we're going to generate a random number, we're going to need to import the random module. So we've got that random module imported. But how are we going to select this letter? Well, one way we can do that is we could simply generate an alphabet string. Alphabet equals the 26 letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, and one more for space. Okay, so now we've got this string that's 27 characters long, and we can use one of our random functions to pick a random number between 0 and 26, and we can index into that uh, alphabet string to select a random string. So if we were going to combine all of those steps, accumulator pattern, sele selecting a random number, indexing into that string, uh, we'd have a line that looked like this. Res equals res plus alphabet indexed by random dot rand range. So rand range, remember, we can just give it the number 27 here, and it will select a random number between 0 and 26 because it behaves just like the range function. All right, so that's all we have to do, and then we can return res. All right, so that's really the entire generate function. So now let's just go ahead and do a quick test of that. Uh, let's print the result of calling generate1, 28, and we'll save this, we'll give it a quick run, and if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that we generated a string that doesn't really look anything like me thinks it is like a weasel. So this might take a while. Okay, so meanwhile, the second phase of this was to write a scoring function. Now, of course, we could just check and see if the return string from generate1 exactly matches me thinks it is like a weasel, but it'd be a little bit more fun to keep track of the scores as we go along the way here and uh, maybe print out every time we find, a, every time we find a, a string that's better than the previous best one so we can kind of watch our progress as we hopefully work our way towards uh, generating this string. So let's just, uh, we'll write this score function. 
and we'll call it score and it'll take the goal and it'll take the uh, well let's call it test string as the two parameters so what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to iterate over all the characters in the goal string and the test string and as we iterate we're gonna compare each each character from each string in order and keep track of the number of characters that match in the right position. Then we can simply divide by the length and that gives us the percentage of characters that are correct. So that would be a pretty good score. If 100% of the characters are correct, we know the strings match exactly and we're, uh, we can be done. So again, we're going to need the accumulator pattern. So let's say num same equals zero and then we'll have another have our for loop for i in range and let's go by the length of goal now we can just simply ask the question if goal sub i since we're indexing into a string recall that goal sub i will give us a single character and if that equals test string sub i then num same equals num same plus one. And after we've iterated, now we can return num same divided by length of goal. So once again, now let's let's just do a, a quick test. We'll print out the results of calling score on the goal of me thinks it is like a weasel and generate one twenty eight. So hopefully we haven't messed up. Nope. Uh, in this case we got a zero. Zero are in the right, so we can keep trying. So Eventually, we'll get one that, that does better than that. But it may take a while. So the next thing to do is to simply put all of this in a loop. All right, now we could say something like, let's call this, let's put this in a function. Uh, we could even call it main. And let's say that our goal string equals he thinks it is like a weasel and now we could simply say while score of goal string comma Generate one. Length 28. Well, that score is less than one because this is going to come back as a as a percentage. Well, what do we want to do? Well, really nothing. We uh, we just want to keep. We want to keep trying that. But to make this a little bit more interesting, uh, let's do it so that we can print this out periodically. So let's say we've got uh, new string equals generate one, while score of goal string and new string less than one. Now new string is equal to generate one again. And we could even print new string. So now if we run that, okay, well, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I crashed my editor with that. So <laughs> that's uh, I hadn't tried running this in the editor before I started, and uh, 
turns out that when you generate that much output, the editor kind of loses itself. So uh, we can run it over here from the from the terminal, and so let's just let's just run this thing really quick so you can see what's going on. So we'll see. It's just going to generate a whole lot of stuff very quickly. So that's kind of boring. So let's kill that and let's just make a couple of quick changes to our uh, to our program here that are going to be a little bit more uh, a little bit more interesting for us to watch. So let's say that we're going to keep track of the best score that we know so far, right? And we are also going to so we are going to print out whenever we find a, a string that's better than the best that we've seen before we'll print out that string all right so new score is equal to score and again so now we can say while new score is less than one. We can say if new score is, and let's say greater than or equal to the best, then we'll print out new string. And best is equal to new score. Then we'll generate a new string and we'll say new score is equal to score of new string. And of course we gotta have our goal string. Okay, so now if we run this, still see we're getting quite a few that are that are better so let's just change this to be best and let's let's also when we're printing new string let's print out right let's print out new score before it so now let's take a look okay I made a classic little mistake there that uh, hung the program again uh, so I don't mind showing you my mistakes uh, in this. So what I had done was I had run Python, uh, Python, and Python was running Python 2.7, which is not the Python that we're using for this class. And one of the things that Python does in, in 2.x is that when you're doing division, if the left hand and the right hand are both integers, it's going to do integer division by default. So I needed to remember to run this with Python uh, 3 because uh, this is because it's because we're calculating a percentage here, it's always going to be between 0 and 1. And doing integer division, that's always going to result to 0. So uh, that's why getting a whole bunch of zeros printed out there. So if I change over here to running this with uh, Python 3.2, now you can see what's going on. You can see that we started out, we had 7%, then 10, then 14, 17, 21, 25, we're up to 28% of the characters as being our best guess, and so on. Now I've given you a really good start here, and so uh, to make this just a little bit more interesting, uh, the, the, the last thing that I will leave up to you as, a, as an exercise is to modify the body of this while loop that we've created here so that uh, you print out the best so far, uh, let's say, every one million generations. So every one million times through the while loop, uh, go ahead and print out what the best, uh, what the best string generated so far is. All right, so you're going to have to maybe keep track of the total number of times we've been through the while loop, and you can use the modulo operator 
to figure out whether it's evenly divisible by a million. And if it is evenly divisible by a million, then uh, print out the best one, the best string that we've generated so far. So you'll have to keep track of that, just like we're keeping track of the best score, and uh, simply print it out. So it really amounts to adding a couple more variables and another if inside this while loop. Uh, but then you can run it and you can maybe even print out the number of times you've been through the while loop uh, so you can get a sense for exactly how many times this is run.